<laughs> we are live roundtable podcast brought to you by max effort muscle.com i'm your boy Corey g at small arms danny at trey speed and the graphic gangster himself cole susak what's good fellas what up what up yo so we just did chapter five mm-hmm. of how to build confidence and win in life my new book shout out to me yeah, <laughs> <Walter. Walter. laughs> <Humble brag. laughs> yeah you know yeah. let's go kids uh anyway so the audio book is an experience 100%. and let me tell you why i can't fucking read very good that's mostly why but and i feel like i'm laying down bars when i lay down bars and i point at you guys normally then i get a better flow going because reading myself back is probably one of the weirdest things of all time but like when i get a groove it's fucking fire and then we podcast after each chapter which is fucking fire and we're going to actually give you guys a sneak peek look at that today with this after this episode right that's the plan yep. cole which yep. was a great idea tell me why you wanted to do that i mean i think well this chapter that you're about to hear after our little you know intro basically i think is the fucking heater of mm-hmm. chapters there's a lot of you know the non-negotiable habits stuff like that and i think once you listen to this you're going to be really interested in what the other chapters have to say oh yeah because the first few chapters are super deep super you know like stuff that you need to hear and then as the book progresses like yeah that and i think the podcast after each episode of you reading it are super valuable yeah i agree and um i think even my mom said shout out to my mom she said that it clears up like going deeper on certain parts of the book, which I think is awesome, which is why I liked when David did his book that way. Mm-hmm. So I think um, what you're going to hear is the podcast part, not the book part, right, Cole? Yeah. So you guys will hear like what we're talking about after I read the chapter, but I think it'll give you guys an insight into what we're really creating here with this audio book, with the podcast. Super exciting. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great starter. I mean, the first four chapters kind of build the foundation and like, I don't know. You just see why you are the way you are. Yeah. And then now that this non-negotiable habits is like why you're the fucking dog now, you know? Yeah. Well, cause and there's like how a, you can stay that way. There's literally things that just don't compute the same way to me. Mm-hmm. Like the, some of these things that I've put in process, like I just don't really think there's another way. Mm-hmm. So I don't really give myself an out mm-hmm. <laughs> like That's a true. lot of people, yeah. you know what I mean? So what do you think, Trey? Um, well, I mean, I, first off, I think that when people listen to that, they're gonna, they're gonna just be like foaming at the mouth for more. The rest of the book. Yeah. yeah well, thank you, Trayvon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was. Yeah, it's it's really good. Yeah. yeah. I, I think agree. people would be foaming at the mouth. Because there's already been a lot of people who have read the book now, and yes. I think in these podcasts, there's even more layers mm-hmm. behind each story and stuff like that. That really even showcases more of what was actually happening and going on. It's a different experience. 100. percent So if you read the book, you're definitely. I mean, because there's probably about 500 people that have read the book roughly already. So, cause the people can get it free with a stack. So it's been out, it's not out, out like officially where you can just go straight by it. We're going to drop the audiobook and the actual copy of the book at the same time, probably in the next like few weeks on day. We'll get a date out for you guys soon, yeah. but I'm really excited about it. Um, my mom, when she even called, she's listening to some of the chapters and read the book both, which I would say you should do both. For sure. But, you know, that's the thing is, and that is the same way with David's book. It's like you read it and then you get a different experience when you listen to it. Yeah, it's an epic one-two yeah. punch. It is an I epic mean, cause if you I'm straight ripping it off, but, I mean, I was so impressed by the, the way that he formatted yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, if you mess with your content for any, you know, time or whatever, so, like, your daily fires, like, it's yeah. the same thing. You can, That comes out, like, when you're reading the book, that mm-hmm. kind of style because you – You'll speed up. You'll slow down. Yeah, it's hard for me not to do that. Yeah, but no, I think that's what makes it cool, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? When Will Smith read his book, um, it made me way more in it. And he didn't have the podcast portion of it, which it'd be fucking 30 hours long if he did because that book was so long. But that, um, because I get excited to, one, it puts me back in it all the way, right, when I'm reading out loud to you guys slash to everyone who's listening to Mm -hmm. it. And then you guys having pinpointed questions that can take me a little deeper on certain areas has a lot of value in to, to, to my experience in this too, of how maybe I can relay it better to people. Yeah. Um, well, what a, and what, then what Trey said with like the emotion, like you can yeah. feel the emotion coming through the words. We fill in any gaps. If there are any gaps, sure. if you go deeper on the you know subjects that really struck a chord. Yeah. The, um, the exercise or the process of this has been really valuable for me. I think it's yeah. uncovered some stuff. I think it made me like work through. It's like kind of like therapy yeah. to be straight, cool. just out there. You know what I mean? But I don't care because I don't have nothing to hide. Yeah. But uh, 
it's 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 been good for Some me. I was just shit. I was just about to ask you, like you know, during this process, obviously this is a lot of self reflection, big time, and it's a lot of uncovering of you know really. You know, you always talk about how you're, you think you're wild, you're deaf, and you're crazy, and you got that stuff. But now you're cert you're going through yeah. of exactly why oh, it's yeah. happening. And I mentioned some of that this morning. We were lunch, and I was Cole was out there same time as me. Like it definitely, um, as I've went through this process of writing it, uh, going through it, reading it out loud is a whole different vibe too. Like actually, because I'll be honest, my everyone here in this room knows this about me. My attention to detail is not the best. So if you just said Corey, read through this. I'm going to skim because I already wrote it. Like, it's hard for me to just, this is the best thing for me to do because I'm forced to read it half legibly, legit, like in front of you, like be, and sound good. It's just, it was really good. And the reflection with the podcast on top of it has definitely changed. I don't know. It, it's definitely, this process has done something different for me. It's like force yeah. you to think about it has. stuff again. Yeah. Like yeah. whether you think about it again or just going maybe deeper than you did like yeah. that before deeper yeah. than even when I wrote it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause, cause you wrote some of these chapters at two different times. I did. So it's, it's really interesting to even see what those first few chapters look like compared to the end. Yeah. Because a lot of stuff has, there was transpired. a six month break. Yeah. A lot of stuff transpired literally. Well, and a lot them. of my life has changed dramatically since the mindset manual, the mindset manual is still a really good book at that time. Right. But then it locked, which was like right post muscle farm. Right. There's so much that's changed since then. And I've evolved so much that I was better equipped to. So the mindset manual has like principles and stories around it. I was better equipped to actually tell the story now. And hopefully people can then grab and put themselves inside of their, their story through learning that way. And the way I looked at it was two really impactful books for me, right? One was how to raise your own salary by Napoleon Hill, Andrew Carnegie. The other one's uh, think and grow rich. The first one, How to Raise Your Own Salary by Andrew Carnegie and Napoleon Hill, is very principle-based. This chapter teaches you this principle, tells you this story, right? To me, that's how the mindset manual kind of came out of me. Second, Think and Grow Rich, is through stories you learn the principles. And you, you try to put yourself in there when you come up against certain things. That's how I wrote this book, was because I want people to say, all right, maybe I had it worse or not as bad as Corey. Whatever it is, everyone's own story but I can rely on that. That's how he used this to take him there. This was about lifting weights for Corey, but it's about this for me. Like that's what I'm trying to get across with this in that it is an actual path to be a more confident person. The person that's sitting here, even when I read some of this stuff, sometimes I can't even believe it, especially in the front part of it. You know what I mean? It's, it's really wild. It's definitely brought up some stuff that was hard to hear again and, and, and feel, but I, I think it, the reflection has been unbelievable for me. So yeah, it's good. Yeah. I definitely think there's power in like the whole, how authentic everything is in this. Like See, like you can like literally hear the emotion and stuff like that while you're listening to it. I couldn't fake it if I tried. Yeah. That's why like the first chapter is you guys will go through the book when you hopefully purchase it on iTunes uh, <laughs> or audible. Um, yeah. I could barely not cry at the end. It was so difficult to read. And then I thought, well, should I go back in and crispy it up? And I was like, no, because like, I don't care. It's really that serious. The way I got here was because I had a bunch of challenges and I had to fight through them and, you know, and still dealing with some of that dumb shit. But at the end of the day, like, I'm not me if I don't go through those things. And if you can hear that this isn't some fucking course you bought, like I wrote in the beginning, like, I don't got some course to sell you for 14 days. I didn't done this shit for 20 years. Shit is hard. You have to be consistent. And if it's real, like it is, then it'll actually resonate with people. I think mm -hmm. so. Hundred percent. It's um. Anything else to add, guys? It's a banger. No, I think so. Yeah. That'd All right. Good. So we're gonna unveil uh, the podcast portion of Chapter Five: Non-Negotiable Habits by your motherfucking boy Corey G. How to build confidence and win at life. All right. Let's roll to the show. All right, chapter five, non-negotiable habits, round table. I'm your boy, Corey G, small arms, Danny, at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cool Susak. We are back. Hey, shout out to my mom. Had a great conversation after she listened to a couple chapters. So yeah. what up, mom? Shout out, Michelle. Yeah, shout, shout out. out. Customer yeah. service at Corey yeah. G Fitness. That's my mom's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, what up? What do you guys think about this chapter? I think it's a little bit of heater, Cole. Yeah, this one's got some fucking juice. Yeah. This is the juiciest one yet, I think. <laughs> 
All right, you've been starting off each one, Cole. Where you want to go? Yeah, I, I, I think this chapter we start off from the, you know, from the beginning. So mm -hmm. you talk about lifting weights early. Like mm -hmm. this is your first taste of building the non-negotiable habits. Yep. And I think what's really important is is how you had the training partners who fell off. You immediately <laughs> saw them come for two or three weeks, yes. not get the result, while you're already, you know, seeing the baby abs, <laughs> seeing the muscles. So yeah. talk about that. Yeah, that was like really weird for me. And that's, so I locked on early with my grandpa, right? And then it got to where there was other kids that were like, oh, well, I fuck with G. I want to, I want to do, do what you're doing. Right. And I, I mean, I'm talking like I had like some baby muscles coming out at that point, but I was like into it. So people would come and then I would see them actually get better and stronger. And I'd be hype literally like I'm hyped today. I'm the yeah. same guy, just way younger, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> and then they would like get a girlfriend, but they would have a distraction. Yeah. Girlfriend. You know, they were working on the farm or there was something going on and they just wouldn't make it up. They would just miss. And it would it was so perplexing to me early. So this is what's funny. If I think back, I was already like dedicated to a consistent thing because I, I was addicted to the way I felt. So I was thinking like, how do you get better? And then you just quit coming. So my buddy Jim down the street um, was one of the ones. I mean, there's a bunch of the guys I, I trained with that lived on my road. And I'm just like yo, like, where are you at? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And so I, so it never made sense all the way, even in eighth grade. It never made sense to me. And then when I ran into Dustin, I've, you know, Dustin and I live 45 minutes away from each other. We went to two different schools all the way through our freshman year. And so for you guys that are new to just our whole kind of family, uh, Dustin's the, one, the guy I own the gym with. So I've been lifting weights with Dustin Meyer since I was like 16 years old. And we're still business partners, own old school gym together, max effort. And you know, I've been doing business all these years. Why well, meet Dustin as a freshman at like some dance? Like we, I'm the muscle guy from my school. He's the muscle guy from his school. Mm -hmm. And you know, like we both got swag. So the girls is feeling us. We both can dance. I'm not, okay. I'm, I'm just yeah, like, I'm just yeah, setting the yeah. tone. So we run into each other at this party and it was kind of like, the nod, you know what I mean? Yeah. But then when we got, we had lifting class together, we realized how close in strength we were, but how much we loved it. And we were non-football guys that were as strong as the football guys. So we kind of bonded over that and we both like rap music and all that stuff. And so we started going at each other, um, like rep for rep. I'd go to his house after school. We'd be doing like 210 to be on the bar or something like that. I'd hit it for fucking nine. He'd hit it for 10. I'd be like, fuck. You know what I mean? And like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, we yeah. were like every day benching. Yeah, <laughs> every amazing. day. Every day bench program. Yeah, 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 exactly. And every day just competing, competing. And we just shared like that intensity that I had never had with a training partner. And so that right there set a big tone early for me because our progress then sped up uh, dramatically because of that. But it was sure. consistent, and it was somebody that shared like the same type of love, which was awesome. We used to literally sit together in his dad's garage and go like, bro, one day be so sick if we like owned a gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So funny, but yeah. Go ahead, Cole. Um, which, in, in, you know, obviously you have Dustin, and he's basically your main training partner. For sure. He's relying on you to be there every day, yep. which then leads into where missing is unacceptable. Yes. Um, you know, obviously we have the guys now at a larger scale. Now you have way more training partners who are relying on you to show up every day. Yes. Because, you know, like me, for example, I want you to go there on fucking bench day so I, yep. we can battle together and you can help me out and stuff like that. So talk about that. Yeah, I think like um, that's definitely like a lot of people talk about accountability and I think having someone else, whether they're with you or not, even if it's just a person that when you get up, this is like a, a fail safe, I guess is the best way to say it, right? If you have a friend that lives across the country, but you know that you can text each other when you get up, even if it, it could be as basic as I'm going to walk a mile. Cause I just don't do anything at this point. You're listening to this. You're like, I'm just fucking not doing anything. I'm going to text my friend. Let's walk a mile. And we check in with each other every day. Like there's something to be said for human accountability. And there's a gang of days that I didn't feel like being here, but I knew Trey was going to be here. I knew you were going to be here. I know the other guys are going to be here. And I know I'm the fucking leader. I got to be here. Right. And so I, then I started taking like this different set of pride on that it's just in everyone's mind that they know I'm here. So when they miss, they know I'm not, they know I'm not missing. And that's why I said, like, I will help anybody that wants to be helped. If you'll show up, if you show up, I can't help you in the, at the end of the day, like I will be here by myself with Trey. If that's what has to happen. It's just a fucking fact. 
because of everything you're reading in here, this is how I fucking got here. And, and it's time involved. And so I just knew that Dustin understood that I and still does to this day. I know that the guys here that are really about it understand that and that I don't know that that ever changes no matter what you're dedicated to. This happens to be, you know, slightly crazy by most people's regards, but the reality is that's why our results are the way they are. And so, yeah, that, that, that is such a basic concept, but it's so hard for motherfuckers to execute. And that part I haven't understood mm -hmm. since I was in eighth grade. I really just haven't understood it at all. It's so elementary. You know? So elementary. The, yeah. I know that I'm going to fucking win. I'm going to get better and accomplish probably a chance at what I want for my life if I just fucking show up. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't I show up? I, I just don't, it literally doesn't make, it doesn't compute in my mind at all, which is also, you know, why I'm, I think I'm so passionate about doing content like this because that's the difference maker. And I'm patient. I wasn't always patient. I'm more patient now. I just went through a two or three year period where nothing was happening like I wanted it to from a standpoint in the gym, but it's all happening right now just executed a fucking master's world record and this morning I look like how I hoped I would look when I'm this age are you fucking kidding me yeah because I keep showing up mm -hmm. so just fucking show up so why don't you talk to the people that are just starting out maybe they're on lunge day four yeah or, or like or if they got some momentum coming in and then something comes in to yeah. their life distraction wise and they're like oh fuck it you know what I mean yeah, like, yeah I mean the first thing I think about is doing it when it's inconvenient for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just, you guys just came off of meat, right? Usually you're yeah. pretty fucking drained for, sure. you know, three, seven days, whatever of course. it is. So like, talk about like the, the days that's not Christmas. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Why, why that's important to show up. I just think that you have to talk shit to yourself. What am I going to do? Give up on myself? He does this in the mirror, by the way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I just talk shit to myself. <laughs> I talk to my shit to myself all the fucking time before I get under the bar. I call myself a little bitch ass. hoe. I mean, it's real. You have to talk shit to yourself. Every like great athlete talks shit to himself or creates narratives in their head to attempt to be great. And so if you're on day four and something comes up, you got to be like, am I really going to give up on myself? Mm -hmm. You're giving up on yourself. So there's no one that's going to come and say, uh, you know, like you have to put these things in place to guarantee that you got a chance to try to go get what you want. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's why, like, um, I think one of my superpowers is the consistency because it just never made sense not to be consistent in my head. It just, it, it, so when I locked onto that and I realized, Ooh, this is how I'm going to beat most people. Now I'll tell you, I was the same consistent person in basketball, but my skill set just wasn't there to be great. It just is what it is. So like, I realized there is a talent component to some degree which is why I used to say all the time, like, I'm not breaking world records, but I'm going to go give what I got. Well, then I broke one. That's where I had a lot of parallels was well with like the mirror thing, like between you and like David Goggins, mm -hmm. because you're just like brutally honest. The mirror doesn't yeah. lie. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. It's like, what kind of person do you want to be? Yeah. Yeah. Like, are you going to, you know, are you going go to go? I'm not going to lie right to now? myself. Like, yeah. Dude. yeah exactly. I mean, there's, but I think that's so important. People will avoid the mirror at all costs. Oh, you yeah. got, I don't care what anybody says. They still got to look at it once. <laughs> yeah fuck yeah and but, you know it you know exactly what time it is yeah i said something to brian peters the other day when i was uh doing something and i was like yeah man i was like the discipline's just showing i can see it on myself because i'm getting what i want you know what i mean he's like i like that you tie it to discipline it's exactly what it is at the end of the day unless you have some unfortunate thing going on physically yeah. What you're showcasing is you're showcasing your discipline. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. It's just what it is. It's black and white it's, right there. It's, <laughs> it's that very, black and white. Yeah, it's, and so I'm never judging anybody because this is my job. I'm here to help people. I don't expect my friend that's a lawyer to do what I do. I expect myself to be at a high level. This is my fucking job. This is my passion. This is what I do. I'm here on this planet to help people realize they need to get their shit together, I think, right? <laughs> But the reality is, is that that's what you're showcasing. It doesn't make you better than anybody, but it showcases that what's your lifestyle. Now, some people are gifted with amazing genetics, and that is part of it too. But the reality is, that's the way I've always tied it back. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's, you know, so yeah, it's, that's the tough thing to look in the mirror sometimes. So when I'm coming off weighing 240 that one time or weighing 215 most recently, I'm looking at myself and I'm like, get your fucking shit together, Corey. 
who's following this guy? <laughs> yeah. The motherfuckers want to follow this guy way more. You know yeah, what I mean? And not only in the gym, but it translates everywhere. Like, Come on, man. I mean, like, look at the, I mean, the last the hundred carryover. days of momentum of carryover. Look what we're reading right now. Yeah. So I like, mean, well, I wouldn't have finished this if I wasn't dialed like that. Yeah. Like if you're learning a new skill or if you're trying to get that promotion, like even in the like days you don't feel great, if you just do something like you're still beating everyone else, I'll just be yeah, straight with you. Yeah. It's a fact. hundred percent. Trayvon. <clears throat> Yeah, so I, I mean, you I were think, locked in just now, though. I like it. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I think we should go into like how these non-negotiable habits that can they can just like apply anywhere, though. Then sure. So like you talked about how basically like it's not just all about like lifting weights, but it's like the time too involved and mm -hmm. how they can like kind of just decipher off into like it's not just all lifting weights, but someone can have a non-negotiable habit when it comes about to anything. Like, maybe they want to, they just want to start reading a book or something like that. Yeah. It could be something as simple as starting the read off just like 10 pages a day and doing yes. it for a year or something. About or, like what you either really love and want to side, it start as like a side project business or yeah. a craft that you're trying to get better at. Um, I just think like people knowing though that this is something that they can apply to anything, anything though in life. Like, it's yeah. not like, it's not like you're like sitting there telling people though, that go be like, a bodybuilder, go be a bodybuilder <laughs> no. and you have to lift up. It just happens to be wanna, my way. Yeah, if you want to be successful in life, it's just find something that resents to you the same way that lifting weights resents yes. to me in this form. And then it um, literally could be, I'm going to get up 30 minutes earlier to walk and read about crocheting. <laughs> Or yeah. fucking, you know what I mean? Like it literally could, that might be what you love to do. I always say basket weaving, right? You, you fucking love basket weaving. Get up and read about it. Then weave some motherfucking baskets. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I mean like no, it, it, it literally, but do it every day. Yeah. And then become an expert at the 10,000 hour rule always made a lot of sense to me too, which is like, uh, was a really popular article written a long time ago that it takes about 10,000 hours to become an expert. So let's not, why don't we try to get those hours in like mm -hmm. programming, <clears throat> You know, this type of stuff, my, mic reps, which I saw from you guys mm -hmm. last night. Like, there's the, – why not have a process to guarantee that you're going to get there? Some people never get there. It doesn't matter. Because think about this. If you do something for a job and it's not – you don't really look at it like a craft. You're probably not working on it outside of when you're at work. And the, probably the amount of time you're actually even doing it at work is probably pretty limited. So it's like I look at these things completely different. I'm thinking like – how can I study things I really, because I hated studying shit I didn't like. Mm -hmm. I love learning and studying shit I actually like and enjoy. So it's not really, it's that one quote that I posted the other day about there's a confusion of is it work or play. So that's why it sounds like this to me because there's, there's no really distinction for me. Mm -hmm. It's just the way I'm living life to get better at things I enjoy and now obviously can impact people. So it's like they should look at their life and say, what can I just implement and stick to that I know is mm -hmm. reasonable for me at this time? I didn't say I went from 7 a.m. to 4 a.m. It went really 7, 6, 5, then 4. It was a, it was, and then that's when it fucking blew up and that's when it made a huge change. So it's like, what is the incremental change that you can dedicate to that's going to contribute to something that's going to make yeah. you happy and better? So yes, it doesn't have to be lifting weights, Trey. I, and I guess like even to put it into context, like my perspective of doing this, I mean, I, I just didn't get here on accident by, you know, I designed the cover of the fucking book that you're either <laughs> reading or listening to. And I got that through, obviously I want to learn design. So every day I was making something, no yep. matter if it was good or bad, I was spending the time on the computer continuously learning that. Exactly. I, I started a streak with that every day doing that. Then it's like, all right, now I need to learn about more marketing in general listening to podcasts every day. I'm just feeding myself and learning that stuff. Now, and now I need to learn more about business and stuff like that. I'm reading books, educating on that. So it's consistently finding these things that happen over time that led me to get into position to be in this chair. You're listening to this now, hearing my voice and you're seeing the cover that's that on the you book designed that I made. <laughs> so yeah, well it, think about all the reps Trey's had with the videos every morning for fucking three years. Danny's the one that edited the book last seven years content every fucking day it's like yep. we're all here because of these <laughs> non-negotiable habits of our craft it's 100%. a percent you, um, you start a streak with one thing then you're like oh i need to learn more about that i need to get better at this start a streak with that yep. and all of a sudden you get really good at that then it's on to the next thing yeah so momentum is the hardest thing to create and the easiest thing to lose mm -hmm. doesn't matter 
It doesn't matter what you apply it to. Pull that clip. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Ab game. Can, can you talk about like um, just like the simple concept of it, it could be walking lunges. It could be whatever. Mm-hmm. But like just the value of doing like hard things consistently. Yeah. Like during the streaks because like people usually like, I don't know, walking lunges is the easiest one to talk about because it's always going to be fucking hard. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, well, it's well, our, it should, it's our it lifestyle. Yeah, you know? yeah. So why don't you just talk about like what I like about walking lunges specifically, not just the benefits that it gives, which is or it can fucking, be in the business world, whatever. Well, you no, want to I want to talk yeah. about because like the first, you know, five to fourteen days is where most people are going to give up. It's the hardest. It punches you right in the fucking eye, right out the gate, right in the fucking nose. And asks you if you really want it or not. Mm-hmm. Can't sit on the toilet. You can't get out of your fucking truck. Everyone's making fun of you. And then there's an adaption phase that's like right at 14 days. We're like, ooh, wait, I improved four minutes on my time or whatever that is. And then you got drunk on Friday and you still have to do it on Saturday. And then it's like, wait, you're traveling. You got to do it down a hallway in Las Vegas. Or I did it on a cruise ship hallway one time at four in the morning or on the beach after you got hammered with your friends. Like there's all these things that then you start to see like how about it are you really? Mm -hmm. But when you streak those days together, then there becomes a momentum because by the way, you've already now through like 20 audio books. You know what I mean? Like if you're actually listening to what I'm saying, there's a development process that happens of building confidence through it that is like like some unicorn type shit, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's why so many people have locked onto it. But I'm not telling you it's easy. Actually, I'm telling you it's fucking hard. It's good. Which is why motherfuckers ain't running to me all the time. Because I'm saying, I said it to somebody yesterday on the phone. Yeah, man, it looks like your program is doing good. I said, yeah, it's doing great. But I ain't telling, I'm telling motherfuckers to lunge a half mile after they lift weights. You think they're excited about that? (laughs) Not till after they adapt. Then they understand, ooh, okay. Freedom. In my diet, my fucking confidence is raising up. My metabolism is on fire. All my fucking strength is going up. I'm feeling sexy as a motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, um, I don't know. It's one of those things that I'm, I'm glad that it's that difficult because it still challenges me. Getting out of bed doesn't seem that difficult anymore for me, to be honest with you. It hasn't for a while because I get excited. But that is always still pretty difficult. It felt good today, Cole, right? But Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like, yeah, it's a day-to-day thing. And as you know, Danny, all you guys have had one year-long streak. So That's why I like it. It's like a great equalizer, especially like in today's world where you don't even have to leave your fucking place like ever. Yeah, what's the Masogi thing that uh, Mike Weister talks about? I mean, it's just like it's it's choosing There's to do things one difficult, thing a year, right? Yeah, but you have like a fifty percent chance of, of making yeah. it or not. Like that yeah. that like really, I really fuck with that. Yeah, <laughs> I like sure. the daily parts like that that you know you can get through it, but it's just not a chip shot. You know what I mean? And yeah, that that right there yeah. keeps you honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it really keeps you. That's you know, how you push the boundary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it really keeps the mental toughness in your head, and yes. just it's 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 always you versus you. It's really not as bad. You go lunge eight hundred meters, you're gonna be able to walk and live after. It's just yeah. thirty minutes. All you gotta do is get through it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's, it's talking to that inner bitch. It's talking it, to in that your inner mind. bitch. <laughs> it, it will come up. It will come up. Oh, it'll come up. That's oh, yeah. part of it. Uh, you got another section, Cole. Um. Well, just like the carryover too, like throughout the day, everything else is like super easy too. I think so. I think that I think that that has a a lot to do with it. Yeah. Um. I think we really like we we really hit on a a lot of stuff. I guess the biggest thing take take away is like you like anyone listening needs to take what we just talked about and figure out what how they can develop their Their own strategy. One hundred percent. Um. Shout out to the four a.m. guys. Um, it's been an unbelievable ride and I feel like we're on the front side. We've been seeing some crazy lifts come down the pipeline. There's, um, the protocols seem like almost at a finished level at this point. We're still tweaking some stuff, but it's exciting to see the changes since we started doing that big ups to Trey for capturing it. Um, and Kyle prior to that, like just being able to showcase, um, what we're, what we're doing at the, you know, when Trey comes to the meets and catches all that stuff that I would have forgot about or never seen. It's it's unbelievable, you know. What I mean, just the interactions um, and the stuff that we're really making happen right now. So it's um, there's more to come, but it's pretty exciting. So you can check it out. But all right, I think that's good. Let's head to the next chapter. Thanks, fellas. Bang.